sleep disorders are very common in patients with Parkinson's disease and uh, I think it's fair to say that majority of patients with Parkinson's disease will experience at some point during the lifelong duration of their Parkinson's disease some type of sleep disturbance. Uh, well, for, for a long time we know that there is so-called sleep benefit to our patients with Parkinson's disease. This means that patients who have a good night of sleep experience much less troublesome symptoms of Parkinson's disease the following day. Perhaps even responsiveness to medications that they take for the symptoms is better after a good night of sleep. Uh, poor sleep has been linked with a negative uh, impact on quality of life and it is not only about nighttime sleep, it is also about daytime function and daytime sleepiness which is another common problem in Parkinson's patients. Therefore, disturbed sleep-wake cycles also affects the safety of patients with Parkinson's disease that they may fall asleep while driving a vehicle and, and this can be quite, quite problematic for for many people. Well, when we discuss treatment of sleep disorders and Parkinson's disease, one really needs to realize how um, rich that phenotype of sleep problems is in the Parkinson's disease population. So therefore, it's important to tailor treatment based on what is really the nature of the problem. And um, therefore, a um, good treatment paradigm really needs to start with the discussion about the symptoms lead to proper diagnosis and then decide on treatment depending on which, which sleep problem are we dealing with or what are primary and secondary causes for sleep disruption in, in a particular patient. Well, we, will, we will certainly see more uh, emphasis on portable monitoring of these devices that are being specifically designed for Parkinson's disease population. There are a lot of these um, sleep monitoring apps and paradigms that are already available on the market for the use for general sleep um, assessment. And I see that that will really penetrate the Parkinson's disease world as well and uh, hopefully help us understand sleep wake dynamics in this population in a home based setting, which is really very, very valuable compared to studying one night sleep in a sleep laboratory, which is a really um, alien environment for our patients. Well, well, lifestyle is obviously very important for having a good night of sleep and therefore sleep hygiene is absolutely critical uh, to uh, be in place. But not only sleep hygiene, as you mentioned, physical activity, healthy diet, all those um, aspects have really positive impact on good consolidated sleep-wake cycle which we really want to see in patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, so lifestyle is therefore very important um, but uh, certainly not sufficient for the proper management of this problem. Uh, well I'm very pleased to see that the sleep-wake cycle has started to emerge as a very important both diagnostic and therapeutic target in the field of Parkinson's disease. We see more and more research interest in this arena and our partners from industry have started to express interest in supporting investigations that are directed to sleep, mm -hmm. recognizing that something that we spent one third of our life doing may be worthwhile um, approaching as, as a modifiable risk factor that can impact brain health. Um, and um, it's also important that our field has recognized that these non-motor symptoms, including poor sleep, are very relevant for our patients and should be really integrated in a daily clinical care, uh, clinical care for our patients and integrating the visits, you know, with the caregivers and, and, and patients and their families.